Hi guys, Howard here with Beginning Jazz Guitar. So excuse the uh, word dribble <laughs> for a little bit, if you will. But I get a lot of people asking about getting started on jazz guitar. In fact, it's a big thing over the years in my private instruction. Guys will come in, they've been playing for five years, maybe 10 years, but they've never gotten into jazz. And they just want to know the basics, you know, the fundamentals and how to get it going. And then they can just snowball from there if they want to. So I'm going to share with you how I've taught it to my students over the years, what I think is the best way to get started on beginning jazz guitar. Now I've covered a lot of this material in previous lessons in a different way, but not specifically focusing totally on jazz, okay? So bear with me while we go through some basic fundamentals and then we'll get things moving, okay? So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna take a look at a basic C major scale because it's the root of everything. So the notes in the C major scale are, of course, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then C again. And you can play it in two octaves if you want with any fingering you choose. Any fingering at all. <laughs> you can go crazy, actually. But the most important thing that we're going to be discussing here is that for each note in the scale, this is basic music theory, there's a corresponding chord. Some of the chords will be majors and some of the chords will be minors because the scale dictates that, okay? Now, the easiest way to remember this is that the one, the four, and the five are always majors and then the remaining chords are minors. If it was a minor scale, you would flip that on its head. The one, the four, and the five would all be minor chords and the rest would be majors, okay? But for our basic beginning jazz uh, lesson here, the first chord is based on a C major. The second chord is based on a D minor. Third on an E minor. Fourth, F. Fifth, G. Sixth, A. That's also the relative minor. And then B is actually based on a B diminished, or in our case, a half diminished chord, which I will explain in a second. Now, as a rule of thumb, not entirely, but for the most part in jazz, they rarely play anything smaller than a seventh. So instead of just a C chord, it's gonna be a C major seventh. Instead of a D minor chord, it'll be a D minor seventh and so on. So that's the first thing we wanna to get together. That's just the very basics of jazz, is learning your major and your minor seventh chords, eventually in multiple fingerings on the fretboard, but that would be for another lesson, although I might touch on it a little bit here. So for our purposes, the first chord is C major seven. The second chord is D minor seven. E minor seven. F major seven. G dominant seventh. A minor seven. B minor seven flat five or half diminished. And then finally back to C major seven. Now, you can play these chords with different fingerings, which I'll uh, probably talk about a little bit, but what we're getting into right now is just traversing the scale with those chords, and you can literally hear the scale go by in chords. Again, you can play these chords in different ways. You can play a C major seven open. You can, of course, play a D minor seven here. Different ways to play an E minor seven, F major seven, G dominant seventh, A minor seven, B minor seven flat five. But I'm not getting into all that just yet, just trying to make a point that you can play these chords differently. But we're gonna do it this way so again, we can ascend the scale and descend as well. Now, two things I consider really important in understanding the basics of jazz guitar is again how to play all those chords, which chords belong to the key that we're in, in this case C major. And then you want to know the arpeggios, the classic standard jazz arpeggios for each of those chords. But I'm also interested in, and I think it's vitally important to understand 
the corresponding mode as well. So you have the chord, the arpeggio, and the mode that accompanies it all, okay? So for the C major seven, we have a C major seven arpeggio, and I will show you two ways to play this particular arpeggio. So we have a C major seven chord, and then we have a C major seven arpeggio. I'll do that again nice and slow. So the arpeggio, of course, outlines just the notes that are in the chord, but in an ascending and descending order. Okay, low to high, high to low. Okay, so we move to the D minor 7 chord, and we have an arpeggio to go with that chord as well. So let me do that one nice and slow. Now when we move to the E minor 7, which is the exact same chord shape, that would mean that the arpeggio is the exact same chord shape, so we just take that arpeggio and move it up a whole step. Now we move to an F major 7 chord. And uh, again, this is another major 7th arpeggio, and I'll show you a second fingering, as I mentioned, for a major 7th arpeggio. That's a nice fingering because you can fall into uh, the mode or scale patterns within it pretty easily. So again, just to uh, review, if you've got a C major 7th here, you could use that same fingering right underneath the chord. If you were playing, for instance, this C major 7, you might want to use that fingering. So you have multiple choices there, okay? Okay, so moving through the scale, we arrive at the G dominant 7th chord. And uh, we're most likely to play it more like this. And the arpeggio is like so. sounding arpeggio. And then we move to A minor 7, and again you're most likely going to play it in one of these other forms, uh, and the arpeggio is this. Nice and slow. minor 7 flat 5. Most likely going to be played this way, although that's pretty common as well. And uh, we have a really cool sounding arpeggio for this as well. Very cool. And that brings us right back home to the C major 7. So again, these chords, basic, major, and minor sevenths, and their corresponding arpeggios is very, very important, okay? So I will talk briefly, uh, and I'm just going to do this without a lot of tab or chord diagrams. I'm just going to explain it verbally and visually, that it's important to know different ways to play these chords, okay? So most of these chord shapes, in fact, all of them that I'm going to show you, maybe all of them, <laughs> are movable chord shapes, okay? So we know that this is a C major 7, and that's a movable chord. It becomes a D major 7, E major 7, F major 7, and so forth and so on. So that's a nice shape to know. It's a pretty common way to play a major 7th chord, but there are other ways to play a major 7th chord. For instance, off of the 6th uh, string, this will be a G major 7, 3rd fret, 6th string, skip a string and go 4 and 4 with these fingers across the D and the G string and then get your 2nd finger into the 3rd fret on the B string. Mute out the A string and avoid the 1st E string. And that's a movable shape as well. So that's pretty handy to know. Okay. All right, 
so let's look at a few more ways to play some major sevens, okay? Uh, one of my favorite ways to play a major seven is like this. I think that's a really sweet sound, okay? This is a D major seventh, for instance. There's the root note. So it's fifth fret on the D string, fourth fret, excuse me, fifth fret on the A string, fourth fret on the D string, and then bar the remaining strings, or even all four, okay? And that's nice because you... within the chord and again a movable chord shape very nice sounding and if you take it right off the fretboard you have that C major 7 in an open position which sounds really sweet and yet another way to play a major 7th chord this is a G major 7th for instance there's your root right there second fret on the first E string third on the B, fourth on the G, fifth on the D. And again, all movable, okay? Here's another way to play that G major seventh, and this is movable as well. Fifth fret on the D string with your first finger, and then bar the first three strings at the seventh fret. ways to play major sevenths. And it's interesting because a lot of times with jazz guys, for instance, they'll do a lot of comping in the rhythm. You'll hear a lot of stuff going on that sounds really cool and it sounds like they're playing tons of chords, right? but they might actually just be playing a couple of chords, you know, comping back and forth, but using these different inversions. So let's say if they were messing about with that little groove I was, I was doing earlier. You know, just bouncing between a G major seven and a C major seven, but what you might hear is... I mean, it's really just the same two chords, but with all these different inversions and fingerings, and it sounds uh, pretty cool, pretty cool indeed.